This is a prologue. You should understand the way it was back then, because it is the same even now. Part one. Long ago it happened that her husband left to hunt deer before dawn, and then she got up and went to get water. Early in the morning she walked to the river when the sun came over the long red mesa. He was waiting for her that morning in the tamarack and willow beside the river. Buffalo man in buffalo leggings. Are you here already? Yes, he said. He was smiling. Because I came for you. She looked into the shallow, clear water. But where shall I put my water jar? Upside down, right here, he told her. On the river bank. Part two. You better have a damn good story, her husband said, about where you've been for the past ten months and how you explain these twin baby boys. Part three. No, that gossip isn't true. She didn't elope. She was kidnapped by that Mexican at Siama Feast. You know my daughter isn't that kind of girl. Four. It was in the summer of 1967. <laughs> TV news reported a kidnapping. Four Laguna women and three Navajo men headed north along the Rio Perco River in a red 56 Ford, and the FBI and the state police were hot on their trail of wine bottles and size 42 panties hanging in bushes and trees all along the road. We couldn't escape them, he told police later. We tried. But there were four of them, and only three of us. Five. <laughs> uh, seems like it's always happening to me. Outside the dance hall door, late Friday night in the summertime, and those brown-eyed men from Cubero smiling. <laughs> they usually ask me, have you seen the way the stars shine up there in the sand hills? And I usually say, no, will you show me? <laughs> Part six. It was that Navajo from Alamo, you know, the tall, good-looking one. He told me he'd kill me if I didn't go with him. And then it rained so much, and the roads got muddy. <laughs> That's why it took me so long to get back home. <laughs> My husband left after he heard the story and moved back in with his mother. It was my fault, and I don't blame him either. I could have told the story better than I did. The thing, the thing about uh, that, uh, that st storytelling stories, if, if, you, if you've been around Laguna, around in this area, you know that uh, uh, it doesn't take any creative genius or imagination to come up with the stories like that. It's, it's just a matter of uh, keeping up with uh, all the news from, you know, the last weekend. Uh, and, of course, some, one, one part of that story has to do with a way old-time uh, story about Cochinaco, Yellow Woman, but... When I was growing up, I'd keep hearing these stories that were suspiciously the same, you know, these same stories about, oh, I was kidnapped, or, or oh, you know, she didn't really, you know, she wouldn't really do that. So, um... Uh, when I talk about the oral tradition, or about the way the people at Laguna take delight in relating um, stories of, of incidents that happened, either just recently or, or in the past, people say, well, that's gossip. And, and in the Anglo-Saxon tradition, one of the things that religious leaders are warning the people about is, don't gossip, gossip is bad. And, and, and I, even now, um, I run into people professionally who feel that way, you know, they don't like to talk about things and people, I don't know, they, they like to talk about the the weather or the stock market or something, it's something not, not having to do with people, but, but 
it's very important to understand it's very important to understand the function that this kind of telling and retelling of incidents has it's what holds um, the community together in a way that goes beyond clan relations and blood relations if, if you really listen closely when someone is talking about something that happened two weekends ago at Pawati after a dance um, very quickly other stories either similar stories that occurred in other places or incidents that occurred um, in that same place uh, in other words that, that whenever a place or a family or a kind of activity whenever something like that is related um, at the same time all of these other kinds of stories um, are remembered and told and um, it's very important it's not just a matter of it being gossip or idle there's nothing idle uh, oftentimes mm -hmm. idle gossip the, 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 the two words are linked there's nothing about this at all that's that's idle it's, it's um, a, a very intense sort of thing this recalling then there was another incident that's real funny too this year was um, some girl was flirting around with all these Navajo guys. Some girl from around here. Feast. feast and then I guess they kind of followed her. <laughs> and uh, then I guess she kind of got scared or I don't know, something. Or she wasn't serious. She was just sort of. Uh -huh. And so she ran down and hid in one of the old outhouses. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she went inside and she locked the door. She locked the door, I guess. And she was. And there were all these quiet. guys on the outside. No, they were on the outside scene. I guess they were kind of. Knocking the door, saying, "Come on out," you know, and everything. And I guess she was kind of getting a little bit scared because they were all, they were like, her idea of a good time was maybe, uh, her, her 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 idea of a good time was maybe four guys, but not ten. <laughs> so she was locked in there, and the guys started pushing on it, pushing on it, try to get it in, and they they rolled it over. Oh, you know, and the outhouse <laughs> fell over. And in, and in the and in the and in the in the in the wreck, you know, the outhouse wreck, because it was rolling over, she sort of got a cut on her forehead and everything. She should and have held on to the whole. <laughs> she should have held on. Well, she didn't think of that. And then and then the other thing was, and then the other thing was, is that they were all they they arrested a whole. Bunch oh, you can begin to laugh about um, things that happened. I guess that's another important uh, function that in all of this is helping, enabling the individual to begin to see things not just as me alone kind of way, but to begin to see one's experiences, one's fate, um, one's tragedies in terms of something not just yourself, but um, everyone else, so, so that it, 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 it brings everything, brings everyone closer and it makes you seem much more like a part of the family or the group and it all becomes a part of the stories and uh, the next time something happens uh, your story is going to be right there with all the others and so there's this link and it and it helps the individual right now um, it mean it brings the individual in, in touch with things that things and people um, that happened a hundred years ago, and there's sort of a continuity. In other words, in in a sense, this this telling is a creating of a kind of identity for you, so that that whatever kind of situation you find yourself in, you know where you are, you know, and you sort of know who you are. It's that that whatever you do, that you never feel uh, that you're alone, or you never feel at a loss for. Uh, you're never lost. You're never lost. <laughs> but down at Masita, they always remember the night at Laguna <laughs> when a man was walking up the hill to the toilet and he heard funny sounds coming from one of those old barns across from the parish hall. 